Well, good afternoon, everybody. How you guys doing? So why y'all came here today? Nobody knows why they came here. Morning to what? Morning to come. All right. I like that when you sit up front, so you can honest with me. <laughs> well, we're going to talk for a few minutes. I'm going to share some things with you guys. I believe we're going to be vital and important to help you guys succeed in life. Uh, as you notice, my topic is titled Empower Yourself for Success. And there, there are some things that come into play when you try to be successful in life. I recognize that. And, uh, you know, just to start off, I want to tell you a little story. This guy was driving down the street and he saw a sign in the yard that said, A talking dog for sale, $10. And so he parked his car and he went around the doorbell and the man came to the door and he said, I'd like to see the dog. And the owner said, well, he's in the backyard. And so the guy walks around back and looks at the dog. It's a black Labrador retriever. And I love Labradors. Y'all love Labradors? I used to have one that was mixed with a child. He was mean, too. But uh, he, he asked the dog, he said, so what's your story? And the dog said, well, you know, around age four, I found out I could speak. So the CIA had hired me to spy on the edge of state around the world. And then from that point, I went and worked at the airport as a long sniffing dog. And then I decided I wanted to settle down and, and raise a family. So I retired and got married. And so the guy turns around to the owner and he said, Man, why are you selling this dog for so cheap? And the owner says, He's mine. He's never did any of that stuff. <laughs> What's the moral to the story? You have to know what you, what you have your hands on here today. You have to know where your bag is going to come with this conference that you attended today. And that's the moral of that story. But when we talk about success, we can go around the room and I can ask each one of you guys what success means to you. And every last one of you will give me a different definition. Every last one of you. None of us will have the same definition. And a dictionary defines success as the one of the definitions as the attainment of wealth, position, honors, or the like. Now, even though the dictionary puts it in those terms, I don't agree with it. Now, this is just my opinion. But the best definition of success I've ever heard, I heard a gentleman say, is how many people lives are better off because you live. And that means you're impacting people in a positive way. Now, which definition do you guys like that? Well, I don't know what y'all like, y'all probably have been well done. <laughs> That's probably the most important thing. But as we get older, we start to realize what the truly important things in life are. There are countless lives that become better when you immerse yourselves in others' lives and try to help them improve theirs. Because it doesn't just stop with that person. Because that person takes the information that they feel they benefited from, and they pass that information on to others they believe can benefit. So there's untold countless number of people that can benefit from the information that you learn. Are you a success when you give your best? Some may say yes, some may say no. But what if your best wasn't good enough? You know, being a student, you know, suppose we have a subject that we struggled with our entire lives. And the best grade, with our best efforts we've ever gotten in that subject course is a B. But we strive and we really want to be in that class. So at that point, we have to get better than our best, don't we? We have to study a little bit harder. We have to turn off the TV a little bit. You know, put a little bit more effort in to get that. We might have to go to a uh, tutorial. And uh, I didn't like going to tutorials, but I had to go to tutorials for some classes when I was in school. And, uh, you know, you don't like doing that type of stuff, especially when you're an athlete. You know, one thing you think about when you're an athlete is going to practice. And uh, the young lady back here told me that, you know, they, that I was, there's a profile of me in the book. I had to open the book yet to see. So I want to read what they say about me, you know. <laughs> But I, I went to college here local at the University of Houston and uh, played football over there. And uh, football had been part of my life from uh, age seven, eight, all the way through college. And all football players think they're gonna make it to the NFL. I don't care what kind of talent you have. But it's just not gonna happen. So we need to be developing secondary options when sports is not gonna give us what we're looking for. Sometimes we can, we can become satisfied with a victory in our life. So instead of plotting a new goal, we start replaying that same victory 
that same success over and over in our mind. And when we do that, we automatically start to go backwards. And we want to be moving forward at all times. Success is not a destination, it's a journey. Whenever you think you've arrived, you're automatically going to start going backwards. What are requirements for us to be successful? Well, there are a few things we need to do. One of the biggest areas, and I think the most important area, and I haven't had anybody dispute me on this shit, is our attitude. How many of you know people with bad attitudes? How many of you are that person? <laughs> You're not supposed to answer that question. That was a trick question. But we have to read good books, positive thinking books. We have to listen to the audio of men and women who went before us. We have to start to mentally associate with people who have traveled the road we want to go down. While I'm talking about our mental associations, our physical associations are important as well. If you show me the five people that you hang with on a regular basis, I know everything I need to know about you. That doesn't change as you become an adult either. When we, when we in school, uh, as athletes, like I mentioned, I played football. I ran track for a little while until I messed my knee up and I couldn't run track anymore. But as a football player, who did I hang with? Football players. You know, we didn't hang with basketball players. We didn't like them. <laughs> Nobody would handle the baseball players, especially. We really didn't like them. And, uh, you know, we had some young ladies in school that, you know, depending on the sport that was this season, that's who their boyfriend was. <laughs> and and as, as smart, honest students, who do you hang with? Smart, honest students. You don't want to hang around people that, that don't make the same type of grades you make, right? And you don't want to come down to that level. <laughs> we can be honest here today. Cheerleaders hang with cheerleaders. The girls who think they're pretty hang with girls they think they're pretty, you know. Some of them hang with girls they think they're ugly because they think it makes them look better. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we all have things that we go through in life. And once we get out of college, once we get out of high school, and we move into adulthood, it doesn't change. We still have five people we hang with on a regular basis. And they normally make the same income we make. They normally live, you know, in about the uh, house that costs about the same in, that uh, we live in. You know, sometimes, you know, we just don't change that because we're comfortable with that. Why is it hard for some of us to succeed, find motivation associated with the right people? It goes back to what I've been talking about, our attitudes. If you have a big dream, you need to hang around big dreams. You know, every time I think I have a big dream and I'll attend a seminar somewhere around the country and I'll listen to other people talk, I'll say, man, my dream is just not big enough. But that's what we want. We want people to stretch and expand our thinking on a regular basis. We don't want to get complacent in our everyday activities. We don't want to be settling for what we have already. We want to continue to be striving. You don't need natural talent to succeed. How many of you know a lot of people that have natural talent and you wonder why they're not further along in life? I've seen a lot of those guys. I've encountered a lot of those guys. I was just watching uh, the top 10 uh, running backs who didn't make it in the NFL the other day, and they were talking about, I'm not going to mention the gentleman's name, but this guy had all the tools out of Nebraska, but, <laughs> but I'm not going to mention his name. You can look him up and find out who he is. But this guy was in trouble the entire time of his college and NFL career. The NFL gave him several chances to make right, but he just couldn't get himself together mentally. He was always in trouble, so they eventually had to cut him out of the league all together. So this guy had all the tools and the make to be the greatest running back ever, but he just didn't have the mental capacity to do so. When people don't have a vision for themselves, they plant themselves in front of the television. <laughs> I don't watch much TV. And you know, the TV is on when I'm home, but I'm not watching. I don't even know what being said. I just have a tendency, when I learned how to study, I had to study with noise in the background. Anybody here like that? I just have to have some noise in the background. And so the TV is just on. I don't have a clue. My wife would be sitting there and, I, and somebody come on TV, you know, a month later, she'd say, we saw this before. I said, I didn't see that. I did. The TV was just on. But a lot of people like to plant themselves in front of the TV to be entertained. Yeah, it, it's nice to be entertained, but we need to be prepared to do better. Success still demands a lot from us. It's unforgiving and doesn't respect who you are as a person, it doesn't respect your race, it doesn't respect your, your height, your weight, anything. If you put the work in, it's going to happen for you. 
You have to associate with people who have success already if you want to have success yourself. Do I recognize that? I mean, it, we can't go outside this hotel this evening and uh, find a guy that lives on the street and ask him, you know, hey, can you teach me how to become like you? Because he will if we want success. We, we can't get advice from the wrong people. And a lot of times we get advice from the wrong people. Y'all recognize that? You know, a lot of times people don't even know they're giving you wrong advice. <laughs> Just because you respect the person doesn't mean their advice is good. So we have to be very mindful of that. We also have to dress for success. And I, I like the way you guys are dressed here today. That, that says a lot about the organization that you're part of. Future Business Leaders of America. Future Business Leaders of America. So that, that really concerns me if y'all came here looking a certain way. <laughs> and y'all want to be a future business leaders. So I really respect the way you guys honor yourselves and, and your organization and your schools and your parents by the way you dress for this, these functions. You have to have a positive attitude. It's a lot of people, there, there's a lot of negativity going on in society today. And so it's, a, it's hard a lot of times to maintain a positive attitude. Y'all recognize that? Y'all recognize even the weather being on TV is negative? Ain't y'all thought about that? The weatherman is there. And why do I say that? Because the weatherman will come on TV and tell you we have a 20% chance of rain tomorrow. Why didn't he tell us there was an 80% chance of sun? <laughs> now, let me point something out to you. If the weatherman knew what he was talking about, why does he have to work seven days a week? Because <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about, right? <laughs> and so, you know, it just depends on it, how you see it. If you like rain, the 20% is fine for you, but if both of us are like me, I like when it's sun shining outside. Or like yesterday when the wind was blowing real hard and it was, the sun really wasn't out, but it felt good out. You know, I like days like that. But to be honest, you know, even though we went through the drought last summer, guess what it was? Outside. I just like the sun, I like outdoors. So you have to spend so much time with yourself, you might as well like yourself. And a lot of things that are going on right now are really sad. They sad me because when I hear about these things like these students who get suicide and things like that, it, it hurts my heart to know that nobody has sat down and talked to these students about self-love. And so you have to love yourself. You have to like yourself. I mean, we can put on masks all day long while we're trying to accomplish it. At the end of the day, we still have to like ourselves. You know, we can accomplish a lot of times we're trying to accomplish so much because we're trying to cover up poor self-image. Take the time and think about the thing that you like about yourself. You know, don't think about the thing that, that you have a fault with. And I know in school, you know, guys don't care. You know, we go to school, don't come with hair and brush your teeth, don't wash We don't care what y'all think, you know, unless we're trying to catch a girl. Now, then all of a sudden, we want to dress up. <laughs> but you young ladies, you know, you, you want to look better than the next young lady. You know, you want to have a new outfit for all 180 days of the school year you have to go. You know, y'all can't put the same outfit on that you wore, you know, three months ago. <laughs> but, you know, guys, you know, with t shirt and sweats, if they would let us come to school, that's how we go. And just to show you, here's another story. I, I like to tell stories because I like to laugh. You know, if I didn't have to be so serious, I'd just tell y'all jokes all day, you know? <laughs> but you know, this lady got on the bus one day and uh, put her money in a fair box and the bus driver said, that's the ugliest baby I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and so the lady got mad and stumped to the back of the bus and sat down. And uh, the guy sitting across from her noticed she was upset about something and he said, ma'am, if you don't mind me asking, what's wrong with you? And she said, that bus driver just paid me the worst compliment anyone can pay a mother. And the gentleman responded, he said, he's a public servant. He, should, he shouldn't talk to you like that. I think you need to go up there and let him know how you feel. She said, you know, I think you're right. He said, well, let me hold that pet monkey for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we have to be mindful and keep a positive attitude at all times because other people will say things to us that will test our mental capacity and our attitude. 
So, you know, it takes a strong person to be able to walk away from something like that. But whatever you continue to think about, most of the time, it's going to show up in your life. You know, if, you, if you're thinking about, you know, you're going to do bad, you know, it's going to show up in your life. If you think you're going to do good, it's going to show up in your life. Like my mentor says, if you associate and hang around with bank robbers long enough, eventually they're going to let you drive the car. <laughs> you know, so we have to make sure we, our associations are good. Your worst self is always trying to dominate your life. We're always trying to think about, you know, what's wrong with me. You know, I had a lot of teachers in school tell me, I was an honor student in school, high school and college. And I had a lot of teachers in high school tell me I, I was going to be a poor student. You know, I wasn't going to succeed because I challenged popular thinking. Because what my teachers didn't know, I'm an avid reader. And uh, right now I read about four books a month. And that's down from about six or seven. But I believe in reading. So even back then, I would always go to the library. <laughs> Y'all don't even know what that is, they do it. But with the internet. <laughs> but I would go to the library and I read books. And I would read on topics that would interest me that related to school, the classes I liked. <laughs> and, and so the teachers didn't know I was getting information from other sources than what the textbook was teaching me. So when I would go to class and challenge what the textbook said, they didn't like that. Any of y'all in here like that? Just one, two, gonna admit it. Y'all heard us say gonna admit it, right? <laughs> so other people are always gonna tell you what they think you should be. Our parents tell us what they think we should be, right? You know, the reason I decided as a chemical engineer, I was gonna go to U of H and become a chemical engineer, is because first of all, they were one of the highest paid professions you could go into out of high school, out of, four, out of college after four years. And then, um, and in a sense of honoring my father, he was an engineer at, at the city of Houston. And so that, those were the main two reasons I chose to be an engineer. And I found out I hated math and science. <laughs> so I had to change that thought process. But other people always tell us what they think we ought to be. You know, I think you'd be well suited for this. I think you'd be well suited for that. You know, this profession is for you, you know, and things like that. You have to determine what you're gonna be. Don't let anybody, anybody else impose that upon you if that's not what you feel in your heart. Be excited about everything you're doing. You know, like I heard this one gentleman say I was in the military, so you know, the only time you got excited is when somebody was shooting at you. <laughs> But, you know, we have to think happy thoughts. You know, go out and get a way to make other people's day better. You know, one of the things I, I strive to do when I do my daily affirmations every day is I always tell myself I want to make anybody I encounter, I want to make their, ba their day better when they encounter me than before they met. You know, if they leave away from me feeling bad, then I'm going to accomplish what I wanted to do. And I don't want to get anything out of the person. I just work every day to make somebody, put, put a smile on somebody's face. Y'all understand that? How do you feel when somebody pays you a compliment? Makes you feel good, doesn't it? You know, so we, we have to be mindful of that. If we like compliments, other people like to receive them too. <coughs> leaders think differently. Y'all future business leaders of America, so you must think differently. Like I said, if I was in high school and they told me, you know, I was gonna have to come lead into my spring break, especially if it wasn't in the city I was going to school in. You know, I'm going to be going from home for three days before spring break came, you got your mind. Now spring break started. Guess what I would be doing today if I was out of school? Nothing. <laughs> but just the fact that I had to leave home to do it. There's another program uh, that I participated in in high school called Camp Enterprise. And it, it's similar to this. You go away for a weekend up to Camp Allen in Minnesota and do some of the same things that you guys are doing here. And, uh, but it wasn't before spring break. <laughs> Leaders think differently than, than a follower. Society has conditioned us to be mediocre. You know why people watch the news? Because they want to see who has it worse than them. <laughs> and so when we go to bed at night, we say, well, I ain't got it as bad as them over there. How many times have we seen the news 
And you'll see some person say, well, I never thought something like that would happen in my neighborhood. <laughs> All of us have seen it. And you know, so that, that's what the news is for. I don't even watch the news. Now, it was something on TV the other night, and I turned and saw it on Channel 11 that there was a high speed chase in Dallas. Who, who told me it was in Dallas? But Dallas here? Okay. There was a high speed chase, they were chasing the Mustang. Now, that would be crazy, but I like to see high speed chases. <laughs> and I told my wife, I say, make sure I watch the news at 11 so I can see that high speed car chase. <laughs> they tore that Mustang up. What they call me. <laughs> but you know, I always sick, but I just like to watch stuff like that. <laughs> positive attitude at all times. You know, there were two sisters. One was always positive, one was always negative. You can never satisfy the negative. And one Christmas, the parents said they were going to do an experiment. And so for the sister that was always negative, they bought her everything that she put on her Christmas list. Everything. And she still wasn't satisfied. Well, for the sister that was always positive, they put a big pile of horse manure on the floor. And she's digging through the manure just as excited as she could be. And the parents said, why are you so excited? And she said, with all this manure in here, I know it's got to be a pony here somewhere. So, you know, we have to look for the good in all the situations. Do you believe in yourself? You know, that's another key here. We have to believe in ourselves. A lot of people put us down on a regular basis. Some of your classmates are putting you down because you're in here. You know, that's their problem. That's their deal. You don't worry about that. When you find out who you are, you develop confidence within yourself. Confidence is a product of what you believe about yourself. Now, there's a difference between confidence and arrogance. You know, uh, and, you know, we don't have time to even get into that topic today, but there's a big difference. Sometimes we have to change our associations. Leaders choose their friends based on their destination. They don't let their friends choose their destination. I remember when I was in school, you know, some of the guys I ran with, you know, uh, were, were involved in a lot of illegal stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, I couldn't go do it with them because I knew I wasn't going to go home. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but those are people I ran with. You know, how many of us like to hang around the fun people, the people that make us laugh? We want to be around people that make us feel good, don't we? You know, that's just human nature. I remember when I was in eighth grade taking earth science. I, I, I was sitting with the, the fun boys, you know, the cut-ups. Now, I'm the only one to make a pass and raise, but I'm still sitting with them. And they want to sit with me so they can look at my paper. But, <laughs> but uh, the teacher called me, asked me to stay out the class one day. And he said, as long as you sit with those guys, you're never going to get better than a G in conduct in my class. And so I had to make a decision at that point. Do I continue to sit with these guys and feel good? Or do I want to make my report card look better? Guess what I chose? Make my report card look better. And guess what happened when I stopped sitting with them? They start talking about it. Every day they talk about it. Almost to the point where I wanted to go back and sit with them just so I didn't have to hear it. You're going to have to separate yourself from people at all stages of life. And that's just a fact of life. You know, everybody we encounter has a purpose when we meet them in our lives. All relationships are not going to last. Some of you that are in high school now, you're never going to see some of your high school classmates ever again. When you get to college, you're going to develop some new association. You're not going to see some of those again. When you graduate, let's face it, you're going to develop some new association because you're going to go into the workforce. Well, some are going to be somewhat like some of those who went to school. We're going to go become lifetime students. <laughs> they got PhD, PhD, PhD. You know? <laughs> they, they got more degrees than the you know. <laughs> but society has placed limitations on us big time. It's just like if you look on the dashboard of a car. The top speed limit, with the exception of far west Texas, where there's no speed limit once you get past, it, past El Paso over there in that area. But for the most part, the fastest the, the speed limit says we can drive our cars at 70, right? Why limit us to going 70 miles an hour when there's 150 on the dashboard? Only giving us half the potential. And that's how society wants us to be. You know, when we start stepping out, you know, people start saying, who do you think you are? You think you're better than me? And so that happens. You know, but you, you have to make a decision if you're going to allow that to affect you or not. 
Choose to commit to success. We have to make commitments. You know, a lot of people don't like to make commitments. We have to continue to make commitments with everything that we do. You know, not making a decision is making a decision. You made a decision to not make one. <laughs> so we have to be committed to our dreams. We have to be committed to our goals. We have to be committed to what we say we want to accomplish. Like I said, success is demanding. It's unforgiving. You know, you know why a lot of people don't? Another reason why a lot of people don't succeed? Because we're afraid of failure. And why are we afraid of failure? Because all through life, we've been conditioned that failure is bad. And, and why do I say that? Well, when we get graded in school, what does F represent? Failure. So, if your parents are anything like mine, guess what you could take home? Well, if your parents are like mine, you couldn't take anything home less than a B. <laughs> less than a B. You know, if you got a C, you know, it was, it was discussion and punishment time. Worse than a C. I, I, you know, my parents probably go to jail if I told you that. <laughs> but we've been conditioned to not fail. Anybody who's ever succeeded has tried and tried and tried again until they got it right. And what happens is we learn what doesn't work. And that's the only way we can succeed is to find out what doesn't work. And that's why it's very important that we mentally associate through books and audio to find out what others have done. Get up in the morning and start telling yourself good things about yourself. You know, one of the things I do early in the morning, you know, I, like I said, I have a daily affirmation. I say, I'm a good friend of everybody that I meet. That means I don't meet anybody that's bad throughout the course of the day. Now, they might be bad, but in my mind, they're good people. I believe in myself and my abilities. People want to be around me all the time. You know, just wake up in the morning and start saying things like that to yourself and see how your day goes from that point forward. Increase your expectations for yourself. And, and the reason a lot of people don't set expectations, they, they don't want to accomplish anything. They, they like living a life of mediocrity. You know, it's not, the problem is not setting our expectations too high and miss them. The problem is setting them too low and then hitting them. <coughs> you know, it kind of reminds me of this guy who went to the corner. And uh, life hadn't been treated him fairly in his mind. And so he saw this sign that said, Fortune's told, $10. And so he said, well, I'm going to walk in, you know, get my fortune read. And so he walked in and hands the lady $10. And she said, you're going to be broke and disgusted until age 45. And he got kind of sad. And then a light bulb went off and he said, oh, okay. And he said, well, what's going to happen at age 45? She said, oh, you'll be used to it. <laughs> so that's what happens when we get, when we set our expectations too low, we get used to it. We don't want to get used to having low expectations, do we? And uh, how many of us see people like that, you know, we know they can do better, but they refuse to. We know they can do better. You know, we even know that about ourselves. We know we can do better, but we just don't want to because we're comfortable in the way we are right now at, at this moment. So we don't want to do better. You know, make sure you're setting proper goals. You know, set some goals that are attainable. You know, what, what's your goal, you know, what you're on screen break? Well, me sleep, you know. <laughs> but because I ran track up until I hurt my knee, I had to go to track practice every day during spring break. And that's part of the reason I could go on vacation for spring break. I had to go to track practice. And you just didn't miss the coach's track practice. I missed practice one time and I got cops for that. And my sister told on me. So I still want to beat her up, you know. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, what you go between now and the time the school year ends? You know, write it down. You know, there's nothing wrong with writing down those. And the reason a lot of people don't write those down because they don't want to be disappointed if they don't get it in the time frame. Set for it. We're not going to always get our goals in the time frame that we set. You know, and like my mentor said, you don't, you never miss your goal. You just miss your time. Because if you don't hit your goal by the end of May, reset it. Put a new date on it. You know, it's not over until you say it's over. You know, don't let anybody, anybody else put that on you. Each one of us has forty to fifty thousand thoughts per day. That's a whole lot. Isn't it? Over 80% are negative. That's powerful, 
isn't it? That just shows you how powerful negative is. Now, anybody here like the garden, plant flowers, things like that? One, two people. Okay. Y'all got to do better. You know, come on. Have you noticed that when you plant a flower or you plant a vegetable or anything, you have to make sure the soil is fertile? You have to fertilize it properly, put the right nutrients in the soil for it to grow. But how many of you have ever seen weeds grow through concrete? <laughs> weeds are the negative in your life. Weeds don't need any attention. They're going to grow anyway, just like negative. Negative doesn't need any attention. It's going to grow anyway. It takes 16 positives to erase one negative in our mind. That just shows you the power of negative. It's strong. And that, that's why I'm not an advocate for watching the news. <coughs> because the only difference between a 6 o'clock news and a 10 o'clock news is two more people got killed. The rest of it is the same. I mean, early morning, you know, my wife watches the news to, you know, see what traffic is going to be like. And, uh, you know, she'll leave the TV on sometimes. And, you know, the news comes on at 5.30. Come on at 6 o'clock. Come back on at 6 30. I'm sitting there watching. I say, all they need to do is play a tape. Why are they continue to sit there? There's no need for them to be there. <laughs> Spewing this negative. <laughs> Who you hang with determines how you think. Believe it or not. You know, there were certain things I grew up believing because that's what I was taught. You know, I associated with family members. I associated with friends, and they had a certain thought process, so guess what my thought process was like? The same as theirs. And when I got to college, I met people from various backgrounds and started adapting some of their thought processes. And then when I went into the workforce, you know, I started adopting a mentality there as well. Then I had to start educating myself. I said, I just needed that whole mind. And I've always had it, but you know, we, we can still be influenced by the daily interaction that we have. Associate with people who win. They don't win all the time, but they're striving to win. I believe having fun is when you win. And I don't mean winning done the wrong way, I mean winning done the right way. You know, I played on the Little League football team and in four years we lost two games. And you know when then I got to high school and we made the playoffs one season. And I had a cast come on, so I couldn't even play the one playoff game. But I took one shot as well. And every year, the project I made made it to state competition. And the, I got two first places and one second place in the project I made. Then when I got to U of H, our quarterback won the Heisman Trophy. So I like associating with winners. How many of you like associating with winners? We don't want to be around people that, that have a loser's attitude. I used to bowl on Wednesday nights years ago. And uh, there was a guy on my team, and this guy said he practiced all the time. I don't know who he was practicing with. But you know, I would tell him, because you know, I get aggravated when I, I don't feel like you're putting your best effort forward. Even with me, I get more aggravated with myself. And when I see somebody that's not putting forth effort, it aggravates me more, especially if we're on the same team. And I would get on and say, man, I say, come on, you got to do better. The women need you. <laughs> and you know, as a guy, you just don't want a female to meet you. You know, all guys are like that. You know, that's just the way we're made. And I said, man, can you at least beat the women? Oh, man, I just put the ball out there and do it. I said, I got to get this guy off my team. You know, <laughs> I, I like to win. And so, I don't use foul language. I don't drink. And, and these are decisions I just made. And because I don't do these things, I don't allow people to come around my wife and do it. Now that's a decision I made. And a lot of people don't like it, but they have to accept it. If you want to drink, if you're going to use it later, you don't come to my house. You know, outside of my wife, my mentor gets priority in my life. He can call me at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And I'm going to answer the phone and he'll say, are you up? Well, he'll send me a text message first and say, are you up? And I'll say, yeah. And he'll call me. My wife doesn't hear anything. You know, once she sleeps, she's out. <laughs> I told her, I said, I hope nothing ever happens.
happens to me because you wouldn't know anything about it. And uh, you know, real talk. And uh, he told me one time to say, he was up, I was sending an email at like 3 in the morning. And when I talked to him, he said, I'm sitting there, why is this dude up at 3 in the morning sending me email? I said, well, why were you up reading them? <laughs> and so, you know, he gets priority. And just to show you how much my wife respects that relationship, that was a business seminar in Austin, Texas on my birthday one day, you know, a few years back. And he called and asked me what I was doing that day. And I said, well, you know, it's sent his birthday. I said, but hold on. And I said, send it. She said, go ahead. She didn't wait for me to get it out. She said, go ahead. Because she understands the relationships that we celebrate my birthday in time. Now, she knows what we're trying to build. And so we can let our feelings and emotions get in the way of what we want to accomplish. Or we can go ahead and accomplish and celebrate. We can celebrate birthdays and anniversaries anytime. I don't want my wife stuff for Valentine's Day and stuff like that. I don't want my wife to feel special when every other woman in the country feels special. You know, that doesn't do anything for my wife. I want her to feel special all the year round. Not just one day out of the year. <laughs> and so, you know, we don't spend money on each other for stuff like that. But that's just the way we are. And, and a lot of people will make decisions like that. We cannot achieve greatness by ourselves. We are always a need a success team. You know, and our success team changes in every, every level of our life as well. How am I doing on time? 
paying us about $180,000 per person. But the suite that you get on that ship is about the size of your house. 2,000 square feet with a 24-hour apartment. Now, if a cruise is going to cost you almost $200,000 per person, and you're going to hit 180,000 countries, you're going to probably need some money, huh? <laughs> you know, you probably need a big spending budget. How many of you girls can get excited about a $5 million shopping budget? Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't get excited about that. We just want to buy fast cars and stuff like that. You know, it's a plain plane. <laughs> but I, I wish I had a lot more time to talk because I, I could talk. And, and, and as I mentioned to some of you earlier, this is my first speaking engagement since December 2nd. I've been off my feet. I had surgery on my foot on December 30th. And so I've been off my feet since December 3rd. And so I'm excited. I'm glad I didn't get tired of it talking to you guys. But well, I am tired of it. You know, I'm going to show it. But, you know, but I wish I had more time to share with you guys today. And uh, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. And if there are any questions, I'm going to take some questions. And like I said, you know, they're going to pass the button around you to drop your money and ask you a question.